Hi, this is Dennis with Second Chance Tackle. Today I'm going to be working on a quantum iron reel. It's a round bait caster. This is the IR3W. I think the reel is about 10, maybe 15 years old. And uh, this one's working fine. It just came in for its annual tune-up. And uh, it uh, seems to be performing everything that needs to be done the right way. So we're just going to take it apart, inspect, make sure that all the pieces and parts are in good condition. Uh, make sure that it gets a, a cleaning, fresh oil and lube, and put back together. You can also use this one if you're working on one of these at home, if you happen uh, to uh, own one of these. If you're stuck along the way, I will use a step-by-step -step process to show you how to take it apart, inspect, clean, and re reassemble the reel. So uh, let's get started. This quantum reel is a, uh, it's like uh, approximate size of an ambassador reel and it uh, has a push button on the side for spool release. And this is just a convenient thumb rest. This has nothing to do with casting or, or the like. It's not a, uh, a flipper bar or anything like that. Okay, we're gonna start by removing the external pieces as we do, most of you know, I like to stop and thank our first responders and essential personnel and uh, all of the people that are working to help keep us safe during the pandemic. Looks like we have a problem here with the, uh, the cap Looks like over time that was either glued or uh, just plain broken in place. We'll have to see if we can find a replacement there. All right, we have a 10 millimeter nut that goes next. That holds on the, uh, the handle onto the gear shaft. That gets removed. Then we can remove the handle. And as you can tell, all of my pieces and parts are going into a parts tray. That way I don't lose them when it comes time to uh, to go reassemble the reel, especially some of the small pieces and parts. They're easily lost or distracted. Uh, you can brush them aside, you can knock them on the floor, you can do some other things. Okay, I'm taking off the adjuster. That comes off in a counterclockwise fashion. And uh, we probably have a, a shimwasher or two that we can get out of there at this point. Most of them most of the time you can't. Most of the time it's after you remove the side plate. We have two screws that are holding the side plate on. These are, for lack of a better term, a, uh, I call them thumb screws. You can generally remove them with your thumb pressure. Sometimes you need a wrench. And let's see if we can take the case off or if we need to remove those two. We do need to remove the two uh, internal screws there. So let's get a Phillips head screwdriver. And take those two out and then we should be able to take this case plate off. Round bait casters have been very popular. Uh, I think they were popularized by the, uh, the Abu Ambassador. Uh, there's others out there. This is a Quantum. The Daiwa Millionaire is another one that's like that. And of course we have our, uh, our Shimano's and the like that have come out uh, since then. So if you uh, like fishing with these reels, they're very adaptable. They're versatile and uh, with a little bit of um, work, generally speaking, you can keep these uh, tuned up and going for quite some time. This is a Zebco uh, branded Quantum, so I think that branding probably started about 10 years ago, so if it helps with the dating. All right, we should just be able to remove this now to remove the click lever. Yep. All right, so we have to remove one more piece, which is that click lever arm. I, I took the other side off just to see if there was a screw hiding behind there. There are two screws, but uh, the screws are the um, screws holding the click mechanism in. So that's not, uh, not that important there. Well, let's uh, a half case or a partial case. Take pictures along the way. If you haven't seen a particular configuration of a reel, or if you're uh, uh, not going to trust your, your mind too much, then take the pictures. That way you'll be able to under, uh, go back as a reference point and uh, un, uh, settle issues in terms of where pieces and parts go, orientations and the like. Put a, rubber band on that because that always gets in the way. We should be able to lift off now. Well, one more piece that's going to tell us it's got to come off. I buttoned down this reel pretty good. Let's just take that off now. That's... Let's 
Okay, I don't think that had to come off anyway. All right, here's the guts of your reel. These uh, bait casters, for the most part, are, are pretty straightforward reels. You have your gear shaft. You have a series of um, uh, pressures and uh, bearings. We have a tension washer, and then we have a bearing, and then we have a cap. Take those off. I'm going to keep them with the star adjuster where I also had that. It's a good place to take a picture so that you know the orientation of those pieces. Next up then is the main gear. We have two springs on the yoke. Those springs I take off right away because they tend to shoot. I get those into my uh, parts tray. Next up we'll take the main gear off. This has a traditional uh, pinch dog uh, assembly. It's a, uh, a friction driven dog. I'm going to lay that to the side for a moment. I'm going to take off the yoke and I'm just going to spray this down. It's very clean. I'm going to spray it down with some penetrating oil and I'm just going to go in there with some, some cotton swabs and the like just to clean it up. If you really had some grease and grime you can go ahead and keep taking pieces and parts off. In this case it's, uh, it's all clean. There's no indication other than a little bit of, of grease around this one post that there's any issues here whatsoever. So uh, we're just going to leave it at that and um, have some grease onto the shaft here. Now this one's almost impossible to get wrong uh, when you go to reinstall because you'll notice one side's longer than the other. But sometimes you have to pay attention to other things that are going on if they happen to be symmetrical. One of them is that you'll usually find ramps. Here's a ramp. And those ramps go towards the uh, release. So these two little uh, spring lever type things here, those are going to ride up and down on the ramp and they're going to going to pull in or push out or release the, um, the spool gear or the pinion gear. So just pay attention to that when you take them off. It's a good place to take a picture as well. I'm going to use some fishing reel grease. In this case it's pen uh, precision reel grease. Just get a little bit on the collar after I've cleaned it up. I'm going to look at the pinion gear, make sure that all of the uh, threads on that, the um, in the gear, are uniform, that they're not bent or chipped. There was no indication of a gear issue when I came to uh, test it. And then we're going to put this back on. The slot side of the gear goes inward. And we have a bearing in here. There's a bearing, so we want to Lubricate the bearing. In this case, I'm going to use uh, Lucas's fishing reel oil. I like this one. The tip is uh, fine. It's a fine tip and it enables you to get into some pretty tight places. And then we're going to go ahead and put this back on. Now we use the, the penetrating oil as a solvent. I don't use the penetrating oil as a, an oil or a grease. It's, it's very light. So I'm just going to go back in and I'm going to oil the main mechanisms here that are traveling. I don't use grease on these, uh, but uh, you, you could use grease as an alternative. I find that it doesn't make that much of a difference. Here's our uh, first piece back in. This is the click ring and your anti-reverse dog. We're going to clean that off. So much about the annual maintenance is nothing more than cleaning and re-lubing and checking. So you want to take that off. You want to make sure that the forks are in good condition and you want to make sure that the intersection with this ring is uh, clear. Okay, that's going to ride on the post over here. If you didn't remember that, that was a good place to take a picture before you, you uh, uninstalled. But it'll go on that post and it runs just like that. Then we had our uh, cushion washer that goes on top of that. That washer's there because there's a difference in thickness between the uh, click ratchet and the anti-reverse dog and if you don't have that ratchet on there on your main gear you're going to have an issue with it rubbing against that, uh, that anti-reverse dog. I'm going to just clean that main gear off. There's just a little bit of dry grease on there and we'll uh, check just like we did with the other part, we're going to check the teeth on this, make sure that they're all good. The only problem with this one is it's dry. It hasn't had grease in a while. So let's get some grease on that. I don't care what grease you use for the uh, fishing reel, just use fishing reel grease. 
brands to me don't, don't mean that much. I haven't seen that much of a difference in the uh, performance. Okay, we're going to go reseat the main gear then. Now this is a hard washer. You really don't need to do anything with a hard washer. You could take a light coating because I'm going to just dip it into the, um, the fishing reel grease. Just give it a light coating. It's not porous, so so putting any kind of greasing in that on there is just uh, generally going to be uh, useless. It uh, won't absorb it to keep it uh, uh, flexible. It's already got that flexibility built in. On this side, you've got a raised side of the uh, the bell washer, and you've got a, a cavity side or a concave side, I guess. This goes to the top. The raised side goes to the top when you go to reinstall. Then we have our, our stack that we took off. We have a uh, bushing or a furl. And we had the bearing. You're going to oil that bearing. And we had one of those thrust washers. These control of the sensitivity of the um, drag adjuster knob. They can go a couple of different ways. They're not flat. Don't attempt to flatten them. It doesn't do any good. And we'll do uh, take the flexibility out of it. All right, we didn't need to take this cover off, so I'm going to just put that cover right back on now before I go to reinstall the, the balance. Get that ready. Looking at my parts tray, I got my two springs here. Those go next. And I guess we have a little bit of a balancing act here. We have the, the two uh, pieces here that are going to go on this stud and this stud. And then we have the, the two overrides, which are going to be for the, um, the yoke spring. So let's just see if we can't get all of this done in a nice manner. Okay, I'm hearing all those snaps. Those all sound like they're in good stead there. And uh, you can actually give it a spin at this point and see how it's doing. And it's doing just fine. Thank you very much. Okay, so that really takes care of the internal portion of this. Let's go over to the spool. We already had the bearing on the other side of this. So you want to clean the spool off. And you can put a, just a little bit of grease onto the spool shaft where it's going to ride inside the bearing. And just going to check the other side of this. I wanted to make sure that this was riding into a bearing as well, which it is. You have spool brakes on here. When you go to reinstall those, make sure that they're pinched in. And of course, I put the um, rubber band on there so that the line doesn't trap on the way in. Okay. That takes care of that. All we have on this side is that bearing, some dirt in the race, and the, uh, the race itself. So let's get all that dirt out of there. It looks like to be all grease. I'll just clean that up and get that refresh there. Now that brake is going to be an anti-backlash uh, brake. Looks like it's centrifugal, and uh, as that spins, those plastic pieces come out, touch this uh, brake ring, and uh, kind of slow the spool more naturally. I, uh, I put grease onto the stud of the spool, so I don't need to do anything there, but I do want to oil that bearing, so that's the next piece. And then we can go ahead and reseat this into the, the reel, and then we can assemble the other side, which has the, the tie-downs for this, uh, this cover. Okay, so we're ready, pretty much ready to just put the, the rest of this on. There's two holes where those thumb screws go in. A little bit of a balancing act, but uh, eventually get them seated the right way. There we go. Okay, so once you have those two screws setting, holding the whole case in, we can uh, go ahead and grab those two screws that hold the, the balance here. Those are in the parts tray. Those are Phillips head screwdrivers needed. Takes 
care of that. Okay, next up then is to install that click lever arm. And they've called that a free spool release before, but grab the arm. It's got a rectangular uh, shape to it. So when I get that lined up, go to your parts tray and get that screw. That's a Phillips head screw. And we're just about getting done here. We have that star adjuster. If I look into my box, I have the star adjuster and I have the handle. And we're going to have to figure out something for that cap there. This is the, uh, the click mechanism. So if I call that a free spool release, it's probably because I'm so used to the pen reels with that being a free spool release. Hope I didn't offend anybody. Okay, we're going to put that uh, star adjuster on now taken care of checking that drag washer it was fine and then all we have to do is just kind of oil and grease the pool uh, all in the worm gear and then we'll pretty much be done okay here to spin spinning nicely I'm gonna roll that over to the one side here and uh, just gonna open up the pawl cap here you get a drop of grease or oil in there. You do that to get the pawl out without hurting anything. You want to inspect the, uh, the, the two tines on the pawl, make sure that they're even. You also want to make sure that there isn't any kind of dirt or grease build up on the shoulders. In this case, we have some dirt there. You can see it coming out of my glove. And that will impact the uh, the performance of that pawl over time. All right, once you do that, you can slip that back in. Sometimes easier said than done. There's pliers for that. Once you get that into the carrier, the best thing to do is just keep your finger on it as pressure and just let it ride until you feel it fully seat. And we'll just put a drop of oil in there. Keep that thing rolling nicely get the cap back on. These are plastic caps. Be careful not to over tighten that. That's probably what happened on that uh, the cap that came off above. It probably got over tightened and uh, when you went to take off that piece from the, uh, the handle it was already broken in place, right? So you just want to snug it up. Do not over tighten. You will break it. Okay, give it a spin. Spinning nicely. And adjust down. I'm feeling that the spool is loose, so we're going to adjust down a little bit on that. Works nicely. There's a little tension washer that goes underneath the handle. Handle. The handle nut. And then we're going to have to see if we can uh, find a replacement cap somewhere. Or if we're just going to have to ride by itself. All right. So I hope you've enjoyed it. If you did, uh, please like it. And uh, if you want to see more, please subscribe. If you do subscribe, please hit the notification button. That will help uh, you to see all the ones that I am uh, posting. And then, of course, if you uh, have any questions, please leave them in the comments section. I'll be happy to uh, answer questions for you. If hopefully, I know the answers to them. And uh, finally, if you have a reel that needs to be worked on or repaired, if you want to contact me by the uh, notes on the business card that follows, send an email to them, and I will be happy to provide you with the repair information. So there you go. This is the Quantum Iron. It's the IR3W, uh, and that's a Zebco product. So with that, I want to thank you for watching. Thank you if you're a first responder and a hometown hero. Uh, and uh, please stay safe, stay well, and stay watching. This is Dennis with Second Chance Tackle. Have a great day.